Woo! Yeah, baby! That's what I've been waiting for! That's what it's all about! Woo! Hello everyone, Lord of Flames here, and I didn't get enough chance to uh, make a reaction video for today, cause I didn't get enough time to get another headset, because I was busy uh, celebrating Christmas with my family, and I was having a call with my dad to, to say Merry Christmas, and how's it going with Texas lately, because I was in fact born in Texas. Texas stuff, you know, cowboy. Anyways, <laughs> but yeah, folks, sorry about that. Even sorry to you too as well, Mr. Betty Kruger. I know you wanted to see me see my reactions a lot in this, cause you know that my reaction will be this epic in, in, in episode two. I mean, episode four. Fine. <laughs> but yeah, sorry, sorry, I cuss. Anyways, episode four for Needles and Smiles: The Lost Tape series was a fucking awesome, epic masterpiece. It was. I don't know why I have cuts because I'm so excited. I okay, guess this channel needs to be where they, where they are, you know. But anyways, uh, <laughs> let's get on with the beginning part, which I could remember, because since uh, we're back with Christopher Ferguson having a talk with his uh, little Nazi doctor about another experiment back with the Project Z, which I'm still confusing. I tried to make some theories. It could be correct between if it could be the project that was creation of the rake, or back with the idea with Zongo because it had the word Z, because I always think about that. Because back in the previous episode that Christopher Ferguson mentioned about some plague that he found in the sewers or somewhere in the underground that has these things crawling, which cannot climb. But yes, I believe that Zago, which they kind of use it for some experiments. And that's the beginning of Project Z. Could that even work that happened with the rake? Or, but even that he mentioned Diana. So somewhere between before that she gave birth to Ben or maybe now. Um, I think that's a creation of Ben. Or rather... If you look back to the audio drama of Needles and Smiles, which she gave those antidotes syringe to Jeffrey, even that she did that to the other criminals before when she was being punished. And you know what happens to her when she's being punished by Ferguson. Christopher Ferguson, I mean, but still, um, that's the creation of Ben, of course, the birth, I mean. But those antidotes probably have to do about the projects that they made, try to create a, a, a stronger a stronger soldier or something they can use to create an army or something. Like how I remember watching a, a Doom movie back in 2005. I know people hate that movie, but I think about it a little bit more. It's something about some experiment. They create something which they shouldn't, shouldn't use. It somehow creates some uh, mindless beast that for those humans, those criminals. I think about that idea, which is somehow almost similar. Maybe not, but still. Give, it gives that idea. And now, since we heard Diana's name, and I thought we're going to have footage, cameo appearance of Diana, because I thought in Facebook, I saw that our uh, fan who's a cosplay of Diana, because I thought that she could be a peer, but no, no. I think she'll appear somewhere in the other episodes if Patrick going to have, a, have an actor or fan to be in it, or... Familiar actors from the audio dramas have coming appearance, probably. And they, I heard the name of Toby, Toby Rogers, and more things about his sister, which this story is similar to the idea of the ghost hunting series that Mr. Bay Cougar has, which that one episode I love, which I had a creepy dark story, which this woman I forgot her name, but she died while a. Uh, Failing down to the, to the pond or the lake for some, somewhere near a bridge. And it was still, the, the water was still ice, still frozen around winter. And she died in that time. In which she was sleepwalking or possessed, who knows? Or she done it in suicide. But yeah, it's similar to that story. I mean, what the hell, bridge? 
dying uh, water that is still ice, but she was died. She was killed during an hour car crash too, it leads to the bridge. And something about England's wife, which I have feeling about that idea, which those two, England's wife and Toby's sister was killed in that time. And then we're back with our own uh, character who is a new uh, employee, that's that guard. Which he was the one who got bitten by a spider, which I believe is Zago's spider. You know? I mean, Zago's shit. I mean, <laughs> I find that idea having similar to the Fly movie in 1986 remake or something. Like he was somehow mutated, which I thought somehow infects. But I know how spiders always do when you get bitten. You get poisoned and you die. Always that. But anyways. And there has been an outbreak in this, which I thought that's taking place somewhere near 2014, or it's just showing it already, but no. This outbreak happened like a year ago, before the event of Needles and Smiles. So there has been outbreaks lately in that time. Until we see a fucking cameo appearance of fucking Jacob Jarvis from the Zalgo Creepypasta movie. Fuck yeah! I was fucking excited seeing a cameo appearance of Jacob. And I thought, what if we could see his father appearance and even Grandpa Jarvis? We could see those two! But we didn't, of course, because I looked back to Facebook and there haven't been any news or anything for, uh, for those two appearing. Yeah, Jacob, you tough son of a bitch, you are back. And, um... <laughs> That was his first appearance in that time before he wears a whole mask and look like Leatherface. And then we get to see the, see him meeting up with Jeffrey. First time. I find something that happened in the Algo movie, which I don't know where Jacob's been his whole time since that movie. And I thought he died in that time when Jeffrey just suddenly found him and killed him. But no, those two just meet up for some reason. Until he gives him a present to have him a deal. To get out of the jackets, of course, but still. He gave him a first present. Oh, that's nice for you, Jeffrey. <laughs> Which you're, you're going to kill him or whatnot. I don't know. But I thought something about that scene when he used some sort of rope. Because I thought he was going to kill Jacob or whatnot. I don't know, but... I don't understand. Maybe he had to do that to kill that employee character that we saw last time. And then we're back with... Floyd Knapp as Officer Maze, that awesome bastard, he's awesome, an awesome character, which I still wish him to get a spin-off movie for himself. I truly wish for him to get that. If I could have some uh, references or similar ideas to other movies or series before they had some sort of uh, Officer movies, I don't know, something interesting. But anyways, he's doing his own job until... I suppose I'll go home. Mook some uh, Velveeta mac and cheese and watch some Lord of Flames on YouTube. He fucking say it. He fucking said my name. He said Lord of Flames on YouTube. When I heard that, I was like, what the fuck? What the fuck? <laughs> oh, fuck. Mr. Betty Krueger, boy nap, you son of a bitch. It's all, you are awesome. <laughs> Fucking awesome. I know I cussing too much because those cuts are just things when I get excited a bit. A lot, perhaps. But still, that was awesome. Saying my name in that, for that first appearance. <laughs> Mr. Betty Krueger, you one awesome bastard. You are fucking awesome. Awesome as hell. And, uh, let's see. Now, going back to the asylum with our guard, going back to uh, take Jacob, because since he got, uh, Jeffrey back in the cell, I think? Maybe not. Because since now Jeffrey gave him the mask, he <laughs> only did one simple funny scene of it, which made me laugh. Think about Deadpool, perhaps. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, keep it. 
One of many, perhaps. He's doing that, <laughs> that moment right there, saying, checking if he got it right. I love that scene, it's very funny too. Like how we always see Jeffrey always being the scary, laughable, horror type slasher. But now with that scene, give him that type of idea because he was different before he was, is a zombie or not. Maybe it's different between him as a living human and as a zombie. But oh well. Now he gave him a present of a mask and he gave Jacob an address that leads to Zalgo. A Zalgo could be part of the movie location where it all started. So all this time, this movie, Zalgo Creepypasta, would lead you from that series to that. How? How the hell you do that? How the hell you did that, Mr. Barry Kruger? Anyways, <laughs> I'm so excited. I'm so happy. Because that part of the event of the Zalgo movie, and... I don't know why, I mean, did, Z did Jeffrey already met Zalgo early? Before he would die in the coal mines, or what? I mean, it could be true, I mean... I mean, re I remember that other audio drama years ago, which is a, a friend behind the wall. I think that was what the audio drama was called. Which that person was in the asylum, or maybe not, and he made Zalgo in the wall. I thought that kind of sound somewhere similar to that idea if Jerry did met Zago early in the asylum. And that would lead to, like, if Zago was talking to Jerry, he'd be like, Hey, Jeffrey, give Jacob an address so we can lead to that the event of Zago could be part of movies so I can appear in. Hey, Jeffrey would like, Sure thing. Give me the address. Thank you. Here, Jacob. There. And, um... Yeah, I think that somehow works. I think not. I don't know. <laughs> Until we don't know what happened to that night guard, if he is. But I know that Jacob did attack him. Because Jeffrey's not the one who did it. It was Jacob. But why we didn't... I know we already said it because we didn't get to see the other actors appear. Which they're busy in other times in life. So, I think Jake was... Jacob's the only one there. Well, maybe. If we're going to hear more of uh, Christopher Ferguson's audios tapes. If that could work. Have references of their names of appearance. And, uh, we didn't get any cameo names or anything about Larry Jack yet. Not yet. Maybe not. And, uh, until we get to more of it from Officer Mace, that awesome bastard, which, since he already said my name, but he did an awesome funny scene I love, which is fucking awesome. Even Patrick Ferguson was on the phone as Officer Mate's mother. It was funny. And uh, he did an awesome line joke with, Oh, that's Bigfoot! No, it's... I forgot the name, but that was awesome. Even he did an awesome line. Be gone, demon! Amen. Ah, pancakes, pizza, waffles, and weed. Be gone, demon! Amen. That's awesome. You better keep using that line. I love it. If he gets an uh, if he gets a spin-off movie or series, please give him the more of that line. I love that scene. It is awesome. I love it. Fucking awesome. Oh sorry. Okay. <laughs> Anyways. Until we get to the end credit scene with someone's hand in the light bulb and the key. Could that be the night guard? Which I believe it is. Which I don't know who the key is. Whose key is that belong to? Which I think it could be the night guard. That security guard. Who died from, from Jacob. I guess Jacob did a good job without using a chainsaw. He could just be like them guy just whipping that, per that person's arm off. I don't know. <laughs> Fucking awesome. And that's the end of the episode right there. Until I look at the comments because I was in full screen watching it the whole thing. And some people said, one person who did a comment on my name, <gasps> Lord of Flames! Yeah, <laughs> yeah, this is awesome. And we get to the Blueberry out 
out bloopers and outtakes. And those are awesome. And there are a bit of delete scenes I want to see that shouldn't be deleted. Which I think there are delete scenes, or rather, I mean, there are bloopers, but I want to see it. The actual scene of the episode where Officer Mays did the middle finger at the airplane. Because that's the same behind the scenes or bloopers back in Zalgo. Why you had to delete that? Why you had to delete that? That was awesome. Make things a little bit funny for Officer Mays. Give him more of that, please. Ugh. Yeah, and the bloopers video was so funny as well. I love it. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, folks, uh, that's all I had to say. And Mr. Betty Kruger, you are one awesome bastard. Having my name, having good references and cameo appearance. I love it. I think episode four is my favorite. I don't know. I mean, if I change my mind, if episode five is better, I don't know. Because I don't know what's going to be next for next year. But anyways, folks, that's all I got for my review reaction for the episode four of Needles and Smiles. Lost tapes. Man, Mr. Betty Cougar, if you need help for your series, if you need another person, another character who has, could be a, a phone call scene or audio tape appearance of a random security guard, if you need a voice actor... If you need someone to help, you can ask me. Like, I like had you did the others back in that time. I mean, if you need another character, another actor to be someone else for a phone call scene or um, an audio tape version or something else, you can ask me. Because I like to help you guys. Until I look at the Facebook and I saw another post, which is... Mr. Barry Kruger is going to be in my film next year. And I saw only one post and it was fucking awesome. Fucking awesome. 100% awesome. Because I don't know why I had to keep saying awesome if I was a legit or something else. But man, oh man. This is one type of video I'm going to cut a lot. Oh boy. But anyways, folks. I hope you enjoyed this and I... Some weeks or next year, I might going to get another headset because there was that. Because remember, I always use that headset. This is why I mean the hinge is broken. Because I'm using a lot to sleep on my bed because I need the whole thing to cover my ears while relaxing. Because I know I would just use these guys, these AirPods. But they're not fully uh, covering my ears to, uh, for me to just hear the music instead. Because I'm much of a, a librarian guy who wants to sleep nicely, relaxation, while my siblings are up. Well, of course, my brother is the only one who's up in this house. Playing games with his friends. But yeah, next year I'm not going to get another headset. But anyways, folks, I hope you enjoyed this. And leave a like, comment, and subscribe for more. But if you don't, that's fine. I'm fine with that. And please support Mr. B. Support Mr. Betty Kruger. If you don't, I'll make sure you will go to sleep. Bye, little smiles. This is Lord of Flames here. I'll see you guys next time. Bye, folks. Have a wonderful day.